What up guys, Delta. And Blue. And we are going to show you how we made our Awaken the Dragons Yugi deck. We just released somewhat recently Awaken the Dragons Yugi deck, Awaken the Dragons Kaiba deck, Awaken the Dragons Joey deck, Awaken the Dragons Kaiba, uh, I mean, uh, Raphael deck. And uh, we haven't done deck profile any of them yet, so we figured we would start with the King of Games. Now if you guys are new to our channel, we have all those decks and more and duels with them. You can check that out on our channel. But anyway, onto this really awesome deck. Everybody loves Awaken the Dragons arc, it's definitely one of our favorites. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just an awesome, awesome deck. Oh, I like all of Yugi's decks. So, um... <sighs> First up is Alpha the Magnet Warrior. Um, you know, you guys, a lot of you guys probably know this. He's running the Magnets ever since Battle City. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, they've been staples ever since their debut in Battle City. So, we don't have to go through them very much. Um, you know, they, they became some of his main... Uh, lower level monsters that he was he was running through. Something he didn't use in Battle of the City, but brought back for Waking Dragons is Curse the Dragon. Yep. You know, we saw a lot of that in the first Dark Duel's Kingdom. It went away in Battle of the City, like Delta said, and it came back. And it was really cool to see that. Dark Magician. Always one of Yugi's mainstays. It's his Trump. I don't really think we need to say much about it. And it became it. especially important because you could uh, use it with Tamias in Waking Dragons. So, obviously, Yugi, you gotta be there. Every season, or maybe not every season, but in at least multiple seasons, Yugi has had some kind of trump that went with Dark Magician. True. In the first one, I mean, I wouldn't say too much of a trump, but he did have uh, Dark Sage when he partnered with Joey. Um, Dark Paladin came in in Dal City, of course. Yeah, and then Waking the Dragons, he combined it with Tamias for Aim of the Dragons, so it really has. You know, not only had a place in his deck, but he's incorporated it with other cards to, you know, really have a recurring thing, not just with the monster, but with combo combos with the monster. Guy the Fierce Knight. Again, back from Duel's Kingdom. Disappeared this, in Battle City. Yeah, this like Curse of Dragon disappeared. And then it came back so he can make Guy the Dragon champion with it. And uh, two tributes for 2300 ain't that good, but hey, Yugi used it. Giant Soldier of Stone, same thing. You know, it, there's a lot of cards in Yugi's Waking the Dragons deck um, that were in Duel's Kingdom and they were skipped over about for Battle City. So it's it's nice to see that his Waking the Dragons deck is a blend of Duel's Kingdom, Battle City, and the new additions. By the way, guys, I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you that we do sell duplicates of our decks. So if you're interested in any of that, we have lists of all the decks we have. So you can actually see this list written out, too. You can see our Wake the Dragon Yugi list written out. We'll have that list in the description. So hit us up on that Facebook if you want to buy this. But be warned, this deck is actually one of the most expensive decks we have, if not the most expensive. But we can highlight some of those. we get to those. Um, Gazelle uh, combos with Brofomet to make Chimera. Um, this falls under the category of monsters we saw in playing Battle City that made a return. And, uh, yeah. Jack's Knight. Uh, you know, one of the knights is the one that you summon off of queens and kings. Not much to say there. Like, uh, like the Magna Warriors, introducing Battle City. Yeah. Continuing to use them. What's interesting is that the Poker Knights, the three kings, queens, and Jack's Knights, um, they were introduced in Battle City, but we did not see them until the rounds of finals and semifinals began. So, only the Magnets where... They were the whole tournament. Yeah, two of them debuted in the very opening duel. These don't come around until, like, you know, later on. When you get changed around his deck for the finals. Ruffomet, like we said. Grab Gazelle. I mean, a lot of UV's stuff, you know, we only explain what the cards do. We'll just talk about, you know, yeah, I mean, where we, they come from. We're going to link to the Battle City deck profile in this video. So, if you wanted more backstory on those cards when they were considered... Uh, quote new, you can get that. But since right now this is another a sequel deck, we're gonna try to skip over cards that we've done before um, to focus on cards that are new. Bishal Gardner falls in the category we've seen it before, introduced in Battle City. But it does provide a nice buff. Breaker, actually new to Waking the Dragons. Um, I think I know he used it in his first duel against Raphael. It may have been the first time he used it. I'm not sure. Breaker's a card that's been around a little while. It came out with Dark Magician Girl um, yeah. in Magician's Force, but obviously we saw a lot of her in 
Bow City and Breaker are still uh, new yeah. to the anime. Very powerful in the deck, though. I mean, to be able to pop a spell trap. Capital Turtle falls in the other category of introduced in Duel's Kingdom, didn't show up for Bow City, comes back for Waking the Dragons. Uh, a favorite of mine, actually. Um, favorite of mine too, actually. I really like just, it. It was just a really cool card. It's like an armored turtle. It is. It looks. It looks badass. Dark Magician Girl. Not much to say here. Introduced in Battle City. It was really nice to expand the Dark Magician theme, lore. Yeah. I uh, maybe lore is not the best word. Theme, but you get where you get. You yeah, know, you guys get where we're coming from. It this. expands the family. You know, magician really, Black Chaos, Dark Magician Girl, Dark Magician. Especially because she works off Dark Magician and with Magician her Black Chaos. Yeah. Electromagnetic Turtle. Thank God we got this. This was introduced in Bal City, though. He first used it in Bal City, I think, in his duel against Kaiba. Yeah. And then we saw it pop up again. But again, a newer card. So our first Bal City deck profile for Yugi does not have this because at the time that deck was built, this card was not printed. I'm not sure and if our most recent one has it either. Um, I actually don't think the most recent Balsa Yugi deck we'll link to will have Electromagnetic Turtle, but like we said, in the deck list below, you will see it uh, referenced. Uh, you will see it in Yugi's deck list down there. Um, again, that is because we update the decks more frequently than the deck profile videos, so sometimes the deck profile, the deck might be out of date, new cards have been released, but we do update the decks as soon as we get our hands on new cards, like Arcana. We had that one updated as soon as we got all the new cards. We just yeah. didn't get around to making a video yet. Um, we will. You, you guys didn't expect other deck profiles of the Waking the Dragon decks that we're talking about making, obviously. But that's why I said check the list, because the list updates right away, because that's yeah. a lot easier for us to do. So you will still get your deck profiles. Where we talk and talk and talk about you know the cards, but if you want just the bare list, we get those out much quicker. King of Sight, like we said before, goes along with Jackson and Queen. The only effect one of the trio. That is true. And again, his effect unites the trio that by having two of them, you get the third one. Curry Bandit, awesome, awesome card. I like what Konami did with when they printed it. What they did with it when they printed it. Um, we're still waiting to see all the other Curry cards like Curry Boo and Curry Bay and. Curry Ba and all them. But, I mean, I think Curry Bandit is technically made from the five of them. I don't know. You guys can check us on uh, on how Curry Bandit was made. Because I don't think it was just a card you regularly summon in the anime. But I'm not 100% sure. Regardless, it's uh, it's actually pretty good. You know, it can really dig you to, like, Eye of Demise, for example. To powerful spell cards that you want. Yeah. And, um, although I'm not as much of a fan of it... You know, it was nice to see an expansion of the Karibo family as well. That you know, we have these monsters yes. that we've seen Yugi use since the beginning: Dark Magician, Karibo, and then they keep expanding on them. But there's more of them that they, you know, they worked together. Again, it's a shame that Konami has not yet printed the, um, the remaining ones. But you know, at least in the anime, they are there. We can see that. You know, there was so much more to these cards that we initially see in the first few anime seasons. Kribo, the uh, OG, goes along with the theme like a, uh, goes along with the family like we were saying. Obnoxious Celtic Guard, uh, introduced in the virtual world? Yeah, we, we, so. we had a slight issue whether or not this came was from Battle City. Battle City. And the I, ruling was no, I believe. Yeah, so I think it was first played in virtual world. But it's interesting because like we were saying, a lot of the cards were played in Duel's Kingdom, not played in Battle City, played again in Waking Dragons. Or played in Battle City, played again in Waking Dragons. This is one of the few cards that fits in another category. This one was introduced in the Virtual World. Came back in uh, Waking Dragons. Correct us if we're wrong. Sangan. That um, heard, I don't think Yugi has used it um, up until this point, but it's bounced around between a few It was people. set in the first episode against Kaiba, apparently. That's what people say when he uh, played Kaiba, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, regardless, it's actually pretty good, you know, being able to search out whatever you need. Um, I forget when he played in Waking the Dragons, but... Valkyrion, the Magna Warrior. Obviously the combination of Beta, Gamma, and Delta. Again, introduced in Battle City. I think we first saw it in the Loomis Number Duel. Yes. Um, again, if that's not already mentioned. So it was cool to see that even the Magnets had Trump. Had an MVP. 
Wadapon. I don't know where it was using Waking the Dragons, but it, it creates a new category for itself. It did not come from Duel's Kingdom, or Battle City, or the Virtual World. This came from the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, the Pyramid of Light movie. And, uh, yeah, it's like a, like a, a worse Kribo, a better Kribo? I guess it really depends. Your perspective. It's a white Kribo. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> With fuzzy antennas. Yes. And the final monster is Black Lester Soldier. Again, introduced in Duel's Kingdom, came back to Waking Dragons. A favorite of mine, you know, I was so excited when that card came out in the Yugi Structure deck a long, long time ago. Uh, you know, it just, it's, it was, you know, a big awesome. prominent thing and, well, not so much Duel's Kingdom, but when it came out against Mai in the finals, you know, that was what, she didn't, he didn't even necessarily defeat her in the duel. He summoned that to get over her cyber, her harpy's pet dragon. I think. Don't quote me that, but he summoned that. And she scooped. She just forfeited. She's like, you Scoop. know what? Good game. Scoop. So it didn't even have to do anything to win her in the duel. She was like, GG, no re. Berserker Soul. He used this to win his first game against Raphael in a very overkill move, I believe. He had, I think, obnoxious Celtic guard or something attacked directly, and then he he actually got really lucky and revealed a whole bunch of monsters off the top of his deck with its effect. And uh, he beat Raphael. Card Destruction. Introduced in Battle City. Uh, came back. It was first used against Arcana in Battle City. Yeah, I believe Arcana. That was a lot of these explanations one. will be in the Battle City deck profile. But needless well, to say... Well, they, they should be. Yeah, they should be. We can't we remember one. them. Card um, Sanctity. Yeah, also this is, Battle City. Yeah, this is an interesting thing we want to address for um, the newer fans. We build these decks based off the anime. We play them based off the anime. So not every card, but there is a handful of cards where when we play them, we use um, our own errata. Yeah, that they play more like anime. It's not every card. We don't play every card by its anime effect, but we do specific Some ones Some like Card Sanctity, there'd be no point playing. Ones that cha Otherwise. really change the dynamic, because there's a very big difference between the two effects. Um, so when it impacts the way the game is played, like both players drawing play of six, or you just giving up everything you have and then drawing two, we change it so that you know the duel feels more like the anime. We uh we do it at our discretion with the cards that we feel it's necessary with. Um, card thing we did feel was you can find the list in that errata list that's down below in our uh, description. Dark Magic Kern, borrowed from Arcana. Like another card you'll see in the deck profile, but it can be very handy. It helps you make uh, Tamias Fusion. Defusion, uh, introduced in Battle City Yugi. I think he first used against Strings, maybe? Um, yeah, he defused Strings' as Humanoid Worm Drake. We're more familiar, actually, with where these cards were used in Battle City than where they were used in Waking the Dragons, just because Waking the Dragons isn't as fresh in our mind. Fissure. Um, he may have used it against the first dude whose name nobody ever knew, but he was the first one to use Orichalcos. But I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Graceful Charity. I actually... Unless Yugi used this in Virtual World, this was the first time that he played it, but I'm not 100% sure. Again, don't quote me on that. Although, hopefully, as you remember, especially looking through our videos, this card was very popular. It was and everywhere in Battle City. Yeah, where Hunters had it, you know, the good guys had it. Magic Formula. Introduced by Yugi in Battle City. Nice buff Dark Condition, Dark Condition Girl. Makes a reappearance naturally as you continue to use the Dark Condition, Dark Condition Girl and fuse Dark Condition with Tamias. I believe he technically had two copies in Battle City, but I'm not sure. I think that's what the wiki says. Um, no explanation needed. He did use this first in Duel's Kingdom, if you're wondering. <laughs> Multiply. Also first used in Duel's Kingdom. Also came back in Battle City. Also came back in Waking Dragons. Um, this is another card that we actually do have errata. We um, make it so you can use it with any fiend that has like 5 inch attack or less. I believe, not just Kribo. That way it could be used conceivably with... Uh, Fiend Sanctuary. That's a change where it doesn't impact the card at all. Because that was one of the things in the anime. The card did fiends. 
Because, again, going back to Ball City, we probably said this before, Yugi beats Kaiba in the semifinals, or finals. Kaiba says, okay, I lost, here's Obelisk. He says, look, to be married, you're going to need this, and gives him Fiend Sanctuary. Yugi then combos Fiend Sanctuary and Multiply to tribute to summon for a God card. We wanted to have that realism when we needed it. If we need it. Yeah. Mystical Space Typhoon, uh, great removal, exceeding competitive play all the time. I'm not sure when Yugi first started to use it, but I don't think he used it before this. Uh, not, not much more needs to be said. You can use this to make Amulet Dragon and Dark Magician Girl, I believe. Pop Greed, nothing needs to be said. Interestingly, Yugi does have both Pop Greed and Graceful Charity, which not all characters have. And he has Card Sanctity and Card Destruction too. Swords of Revealing Light, played in Duelist Kingdom, did not show up for him in uh, Battle City, though he did have to deal with Secret Swords of Revealing Light in the very first duel. And uh, yeah, fits in that category with the many cards in Juice of Duelist Kingdom that made a reappearance here. The Shizu as well had it. Yeah. Odeon, it's great to buying you some time. Oh man, here it is. Thank you, Konami, for printing this. This and the other Legendary Dragons are the whole reason we can make amazing Yugi, Joey, and Kaguya from Dragons decks. You figure there's only a t amount of time before Konami had to print these. They were so popular and everybody wanted them to be made. Yeah, it was great when they finally printed this. Um, you know, for a while, we said, okay, so we're going to build Yugi's Awakening of the Dragons deck because we have Tamias, we have the Fusions. Um, the Joby and Kaibos were only maybe because... We lacked, you know, key cards, but we wanted to make more weak than the dragon, so, you know, we had the Yugi thing as a definite, and then as a maybe, and then sometime later we learned that we were getting, um, Critias and Hermos. So we held off on making a Yugi deck, even though it was requested a lot, because we like to release our decks in sets, um, from the same story arcs, from the same seasons. So it only made sense for us to really release them all together, the four that we could build, or the four easiest for us to build. Raphael, Yugi, Chaiba, Joey, so the three main heroes, um, and then the one antagonist. Also, this and some other cards are incredibly expensive. This card is like 40 to $50 by itself to, if you want to buy it, at least, uh, at least here in America. So, that's also part of what makes this deck like a hundred freaking ridiculous amounts of dollars. Because, um, in case any of you are really not aware, um... These cards get expensive. Yeah, you can buy the packs at the Konami price, but buy them aftermarket, they can get very pricey. The Shallow Grave, I'm not sure when you used this, but I do believe this is the first time you played it. Took a page out of Bacora's deck. Dust Tornado, introduced in Battle City. He has this MST and Breaker. He has a lot of draw and a lot of spell and trap removal in his Waking Dragons deck. Okay. Dark Renewal, a card introduced by Arcana, later used by Yugi. I think maybe in uh, Virtual World. I'm not sure. He may have used it before Waking the Dragons in Virtual World, but it's uh, it's actually not that easy to use because unlike Arcana, who had a deck full of spellcasters, Yugi only has a couple spellcasters like Breaker and Dark Magician. But still very, very, very valuable and a cool card. And thank God we have so, it now. Something I was yeah really happy to see them finally print because. I mean, it's cool in Yugi's deck here, but come on, we all want it for Arcana. Yeah, Arcana it was, was the big for ticket Arcana's character. Deck. Glad they made it. Magical hats. That updated deck profile will be coming out soon. Until then, please see the link for our Google Docs for our master deck yeah. list. The accurate updated Arcana is there. The video will come out soon, but that has the right list. Magical hats used by Yugi in everything. Uh, Duel's Kingdom. Yeah, everything. Everything. Meteor Rain. Did not uh, get used by Yugi before. I think he just used this to attack through... I think he may have activated this against um, uh, darts, actually. He may have tried to go for game play against darts. But don't quote me on that, guys. You can just look at the wiki. Because they actually had a real duel at some point until darts just summoned his infinite attack Leviathan Impossible monster. Beat, yeah. Which Yugi then countered with an infinite attack monster of his own because... That was kind of where the show started to get ridiculous. And uh, for those of you math guys, the limit on that is infinite and does not exist because dual monsters. 
Mirror Force, not much needs to be said there. Relay Soul. This is used by Yugi against Raphael. Which um, time? You know I'm not entirely sure. I just remember he used it to, to not die. Rope of Life, a card introduced by Marek that we saw Yugi use. Um, he did not use it before this. It's really interesting to see um, the way cards get shifted because not yeah. only do players like Yugi or Joey introduce their own new cards as the seasons go by, but what a theme is is that by the conclusion of one season, the following season, you know, there are cards that, you know... Were used by one character that a different one picks up. So Yugi has, like... Uh, Dark Newell, Rope of Life. I want to say Coffin Saga for some reason. This is Coffin on it, yeah. Those. You know, which were seen by... Actually, his adversary. It's not even his friends. So, he's like, dueling the bad guys. like, I like that card. I should use that next time. Yeah. Soul Rope. Used by Yugi in uh, Battle City. This is another one we have errata to check the list. Because check it, that list. Again, it goes by its anime effect because its printed effect does not help us in character deck duels. It's incredibly infrequent that you could ever pull off its because we we've written we, effect. We've been called out. Duels. We've been called out on this, but let, I'm going to explain again. It's not that the card itself was terrible. The card works outside of character duels. And zero gravity is a last card in Yugi's deck. Um... It's just, uh, this is actually pretty pretty nice. It can stop attacks or it can help you get over stuff. I, I actually really like this. It's very versatile in this deck. Um, by the way, guys, you may notice that Yugi did play Diffusion Wave Motion in Waking the Dragons. Um, he had 51 cards, and, you know, decks get kind of ridiculous if they hit higher amounts of cards, and it makes the character decks just overall worse. We wanted to keep Yugi's deck to around 50 cards, so we, we had to cut something. Diffusion Wave Motion is... For all intents and purposes, useless 99% of the time. So At least with Battle City, he had Dark Magician and Dark Paladin to use it. Now he only has Dark, Dark Magician. Magician. Um, I want to interject, because this is something that's been brought to us. At this current time, we are not, and will not, side deck the decks. I mean, the reason some characters have 40, some have 50, is because the ones who have 40, generally... 40 obviously is the bare minimum to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And so we need to hit that by adding extra copies of cards or filling the blanks with cards, you know, that we think fit the character. Yeah. C characters like Yugi, Jaden, Yugi, and Jaden have played so many cards that they definitely see 40. Especially Jaden, who peaks over 80 most of the time. But that's that's throughout the entire season. It's not all at once. And the issue becomes, when do we decide what cards to put in and yeah. put out, because... It's we, really tricky, so we just kind of do the best we do to manage our decks within reason and get, you know, as many cards as possible. Especially, within reason. Especially deck like Jaden. Like, we cut... Um, we cut the Fusion Wave Motion because it's very monster-specific. In Jaden's deck, he has so many equip spells that work on one and only one E-Hero. That makes no sense to include them. Because, well, again, what works in the anime, because it's written to work that way, is very different from Yu-Gi-Oh! in our world, where you're going to get screwed, you know, because of so many mismatch combinations. Now, that being said, this Yu-Gi-Oh! deck does have a side deck, but we will explain that... Why? This is it's the very, only... It's the only deck we have that is a side deck. It's for a very specific reason. Very... Yeah. This is the only one. We'll get to it, but... But first is extra deck. Amulet Dragon, made by Tamias and Dark Magician. Um, you guys can look up what it does if you're unfamiliar. Pretty cool. You can get a nice and nifty boost off it, especially if it comes late game. We've actually summed this in quite a few duels. The, Tama the Legendary Dragon fusions aren't that hard to make in these decks. So this one's come out quite often. This card, like Tamias, just to interject... Um, this card is also fairly expensive, which is why if you've message if you're looking for Awaken the Dragon Yugi deck, if you want the Tamias and his fusions, it's gonna be the insanely expensive. Deck is very expensive. These cards are very high demand. There's only been one printing of them. Um, if you don't care for these cards, then the deck goes down considerably in value. Yeah. But this Tama I have Tamias, Amulet Dragon, and Dark Magician Girl Dragon Knight thingy, um are the ones that really just spike up the price. They were very short printed too, and I think Dragons of Legend, the original pack, had a very limited release. 
But speaking of Dark Magician Girl, Dragon Knight, this one's like $40. These these cards can get up to like 50 or 60 at some point just for one of them. It's crazy. I mean, um, but yeah, I, I mean, a lot of people just like this card. I mean, more so than Amulet Dragon. A lot of people like it, Dark Magician Girl, Dragon Knight, and Tamiya. So I mean, glad it came out. Dark, Everybody wants them. Dark Magician Girl is a fan favorite, so to have a, a, a fusion of her. Yeah. What's interesting about the two fusions is, I mean, I don't necessarily count them with the Dark Magician, Dark Magician Girl family because they're not, they weren't created to work with them. They were created from them. And that's where I argue the difference. You can disagree with me. But whereas a lot of cards were made to work with the Dark Magicians, like uh, Dark Renewal or Dark Magic Curtain, these cards were created from the Dark Magicians. Yugi was given an independent card, the Eye of Tamias. He combined that card with the Dark Magicians, and it kind of in the anime at this point, um, they didn't have fusions for everything. They just took two monsters, played polymerization, and they made a whole new monster. Unlike us, where we have the actual card of that fusion. Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast, used by Yugi in Battle City. Seen it a lot. Dragon Master Knight. He made this against Darts. Um, with BLS and Captain's Boy's Ultimate Dragon. It was nice to see them come together to bring back this card. We have not seen that since the original Virtual World, which was, I think, yeah. a three-part, a three-episode. It happened after Duelist Kingdom. It was a very, very mini thing. It wasn't a, It was not the story arc that we had during Bow City for Virtual World. It was a very brief thing. They went in. There were dual monsters everywhere. They fought the big dragon thingy. They won. Guy the Dragon Champion. Used this in Duelist Kingdom. Came back here because he had Curse the Dragon and Gaia again. Goddess Bow, this was interestingly made with Queen's Knight, that's why you can see her in the background. It was Yugi using Hermos and Queen's Knight to make Goddess Bow. And then we have Tamias, the Knight of Destiny. Um, you can look up its effect for a refresher. This one just came out in Dragons of Legend 2. And I think this is what he used to rival Darts's or Calculus Dragon, because yeah. it could have infinite attack as well. Because, yeah, that's what I was saying, is this monster has the effect to match the opponent's monster attack. So when... One is infinite, they're both infinite, and this seems like Calculus class all over again. Onto uh, a side deck. Now, this is the, in the aforementioned, I told you we have a side deck. Now, this is the one side deck. I know it's kind of confusing. It's because Yugi has a 50 card deck. The cards we're about to show you were only in his deck for the absolute last duel because there's multiples of them because he has not only the, the individual spell cards of the dragons, but the monsters that go with them all, plus the spell that unites them. So here are the three legendary knights, which were used against darts. Just, you know. They all they all do different things. Um, like, like, we look at their effects, but it's pretty cool. If you can get them out, they're actually pretty strong. Like, you know, like, you, like, set, set traps or, like, whatnot. Legend of Heart is how you summon them. Legend of Heart actually came out with the original Wake in the Dragons cards, like t the Tamias family. Yeah, that so it was only I have Tamias. That hinted to everybody that they were going to make the rest of the dragons. I mean, it would be silly for them not to, but that was the hint right there that they gave the, the Unity card uh, with the original set. So Also, this is expensive, Legendary Knight Tamias is expensive. And Hermos and Critias are a little expensive, not the same price as before. But this is why the whole deck just gets to a ridiculously high cost. Um, and again, it was as Yuki went through, and he kept accumulating cards from Joey and from Kaiba. So, um, that's why they're in a side deck, because they were originally Kaiba and Joey cards that Kaiba and Joey played throughout the story arc until the combination. And then Yuki had everything in his deck, and he used them exclusively to defeat the Great Leviathan. And, and save darts. the world. Just, I mean, and as far as deck sales go... The extra deck is optional. If you don't want it, that's fine. We encourage yeah, you to we... get the 50 card deck. But thank you guys for watching. We're going to deck profile the other Waking the Dragon decks as well.